Hello everyone, my name is Pete Knight and today we're going to take an overview of caving ladders. The first thing to talk about is where ladders fit in our safety chain. Um, they basically don't, they're a method of travel. Uh, we don't use them as personal protective equipment. Whenever we're using a caving ladder, we must be independently lifelined. Okay, so we shouldn't be clipping cow's tails to ladder rungs or to the wires at the side. They are not designed for that and they're not strong enough for that. Typically, a ladder will have been built with a strength tolerance of a couple of hundred kilos. And that's really just because your average climber going up and down just creates a bit more load than their body weight when you're ascending or, or descending a ladder. Um, but they don't have a big safety threshold, a big strength uh, kind of margin like our carabiners and our ropes. Okay, so for that reason, we mustn't use them without a lifeline. Okay. So, uh, taking the lifeline out of the equation for now then, we'll just look at the ladder. So, we get our ladder, they come in various lengths, and what we need is something on the ends to attach it to our anchor points. What we don't do is just bring the two eyelets together, because we can create some pretty tight bends there, and, and they will wear out. What we're after is something that will kind of give us a gentler angle on there. So, most typically, they're used with these short wire spreaders. Um, the links are designed to go together without any kind of real bother at all. Um, you can get ones without these C-links where you've got to put your own mayons in. Um, I've got a couple of ladders where instead of using a wire spreader I've just tied um, some cord up to make my Y there. As long as what you're attaching the ladder to the anchor with is at least as strong as the anchor um, then it's it's not really a problem. So I've used kind of 6mm Prusik cord uh, which is rated to around about 10 kilonewtons. Um, on one of my ladders I've even got 5.5mm Dyneema which is as strong as some thin semi-static ropes. Um, so that's definitely not going to break. Obviously any soft components we need to make sure we're maintaining them and that there's nothing sharp inside our connecting points that's going to wear through that really. So our C-Links are the standard connectors, you can get slightly more modern ones made out of like a pressed flat stainless steel now, but they operate on the same principle, they just lock together. Some ladders don't come with C-Links, slightly cheaper ones, you can just use standard pattern oval mayons to link those, they don't necessarily need to be full strength uh, PPE ones, but certainly need to be sufficiently strong. Um, and here you can see uh, my cord variant on the wire spreader there. So as long as the cord is at least as strong as the wire, the ladder or the anchor point you're clipping to, it's not a problem at all. Okay. Even with the metal spreaders, you can see I've used a soft link, a cord that takes it to the carabiner. So we're going to have these ladders set up so that we could release them if we need to. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later on. So when we get to the site that we're going to use the ladder, we don't just want to chuck it down the pitch. If the bundle of ladder goes through itself, uh, you can end up with these horrible kinks, uh, which will significantly reduce the lifespan of your ladder. So undoing it from the end with the spreader on and rolling it out down the pitch until you've got your length measured is the way to do it. Once you've got your length measured, I know the ladder's upside down, lock off the coil, whatever's spare, and then just reverse the ladder over. Just roll it over your hands until the spare coils down at the bottom and your spreader comes back to the top and doing it nice and neatly like that you're not likely to get any kinks or twists in your ladder okay we want to avoid those at all costs as they do cause some damage to our ladder rungs um, now where we put our ladder into our system depends a little bit on ease of use for our customers so if i'm going to be belaying from the left of this picture my customers are approaching from the right well i've got the ladder closest to them that way they don't have to cross over me if I would installed it on the left anchor, as you're looking at the photo here, then the ladder's still nice and high, they can get on and off easy, but they have to cross the belay point. If I put the ladder onto the belay master point itself, well again, that brings them exactly where I need them to be, but it really clutters up that attachment point, okay, kind of potentially interfering with me operating a belay device. Your ladder doesn't have to go on your master attachment. It can go on whichever anchor point is the most easy to use. Okay, so here again, back to being on the right anchor point, client arrives at the pitch head on the cow's tails, attached to belay, and away they go. Yeah, nice and simple. So when it comes to packing your ladder away, you kind of reverse the process of getting it out. Okay, swap ends round, get your spare bundle back up, open that up and then you're just going to roll it up nice and neatly. Your ladder should be able to fit 
in a caving bag once you've got it rolled up. That's the key. You wouldn't drag your ropes around the cave unprotected, just getting kind of trashed and filthy. So we don't do the same with our ladders. So roll them up nice and tight. Once they're done up like that, you can kind of wrap your spreader and your cord around and clip it back to keep it together. Tuck that in a tackle bag and take it on to the next bit of the cave. So I'm not going to go through every possible situation you might need to deal with while using ladders with groups, but one of the really common ones is that someone gets stuck or clipped to the ladder accidentally, so a cow's tail carabiner snapping onto the side wire or their legs slipping through. Um, it's not like an everyday occurrence, but it's something that you'll deal with reasonably uh, frequently. So that's where we go back to having our ladders on a releasable cord like we mentioned at the start. If I can pop the ladder off from the top, someone can free themselves remotely uh, and I don't have to haul them or lower them. Just kind of jiggle the ladder free of them, clip it back up and they can carry on, no drums at all. Um, so here we've got a bit of an example of that. You've got your client with his legs stuck through the ladder. So remotely up at the top, I can just undo my soft link on the ladder, take the ladder off, give it a good shake or just hold it while the client frees themselves. And then I don't need to drop it down and haul them or lower them. I can just reattach it back on. Once that's all knotted up, they can climb back onto the ladder and carry on ascending. Or if the issue was such that they're absolutely knackered, then I can just immediately go into lowering them back down. Um, either way, I'm not going to drop the ladder unless I absolutely have to, because obviously I have to retrieve it, and potentially it's going to get tangled up down the bottom. I personally find that using my cord to make an Italian hitch, which I then lock off, uh, is a great way to attach my ladders. I can release that with one hand most of the time, and if I give myself enough cord, I can lower the ladder a little bit and still maintain some control of it in the carabiner. Now we've been through some of the basics of the use of ladders, we're going to look at inspecting them. So, as we said before, they're not part of our primary safety chain. If a ladder does break, then your client's going to be perfectly safe on the lifeline system. But it's still a pain to have to haul them out. So, if you don't maintain your ladders, you put yourself at risk of having one fail while you're using them with a group. And imagine if you've still got five or six people at the bottom of your ladder pitch to get out and no functioning ladder so you're either going to have to repair the ladder or potentially haul everybody out so we should look after our ladders the same way we look after our ropes our carabiners and our harnesses okay um, so let's run through that now so prior to inspecting your ladder make sure it's clean and dry so you can see it all roll it all out or in little sections depending on how much space you've got available you're looking overall to make sure the ladder is free from kinks as you roll it out and then you're going to start with a bit more of a detailed uh, fingertip inspection. So we've got our spreaders to check as well. Things like the C-links, you often get little sharp bits of metal in there or you know, if they can bend they can come apart. A uh, bit of surface rust, a bit of tarnish is no big deal if it's like heavily pitted and corroded maybe it's time to replace those. Move on to check the wires, so watching out for little needles of wire which are fairly common with ladders that have had a few years of use. Um, but the wire should be free from kinks, um, heavy corrosion or any kind of broken strands. Look at where the rungs are attached onto the wire. Some of them are pressed, some of them are fitted with uh, kind of like a resin with a pin inside. Um, look and see the quality of those. Again, is there corrosion, is there obvious damage, anything like that. Make sure you go through all of the ladder pretty methodically, even the bottom end if you don't use the full length of the ladder very often. Well, there could well be corrosion hiding down in that bottom end, so make sure you do the whole ladder. So any bad kinks, broken strands, heavy corrosion that you can't just brush off, um, any ladder rungs that move, any ceilings with bends, anything like that is really caused to retire that ladder from use. Uh, you don't want it breaking while using it underground, lifeline or not. Don't forget to check your spreaders and any cord attachments as well, uh, especially the cord that can wear out a lot faster than the ladder wire, um, as you might imagine. So that's given us a good overview of how we use our ladders. I've talked about the kind of principles of their operation. Okay, we've focused on the fact that we don't use them without an independent lifeline, and we've touched on the inspection and maintenance of those bits of kit. So hopefully now, as you go forward to practice for your level two, you'll have a bit more of an understanding of the safe use of ladders in your system. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.